Yeah, again, it's got that east wind. It's going to be cold. I think the key is going to be here throwing strikes, picking up the ball, because both these teams have struggled to, struggled to score some runs over the years. So I think it's going to be a, a defensive battle. Hopefully, you know, whoever doesn't make, makes maybe the least amount of mistakes might come out on top. Well, that was, you know, one of the things uh, about coaching here. It, it's always just so cold. And like you said, it's last game of the season, May 21st, and it's, you know, in the high 40s probably. And, just not, it just makes it very difficult for kids to be successful and, you know, and playing in Sheboygan, you know, you wonder why the averages and stuff are always a little bit down compared to the others, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is and you got, it's fair for both teams. Yeah, everyone's playing through the same conditions. It's been a tough spring for everybody, really. I mean, golf had their regional today. No one wants to golf in this kind of weather. No one wants to run track in this kind of weather. And definitely, you no know, one wants to hit or throw in this weather. Well, of course, I set my notes somewhere. Now I don't know where I, I did with them, but um, Bill Horse will be announcing the uh, starting lineups of with uh, South first, and then we'll have uh, North taking the field, and I believe there will be some type of national anthem there as, as well. Park looks nice. It's uh, that was another thing I was going to mention. It's just the second time they've played here uh, this year. There's been a lot of work on uh, on the ballpark and things, which is kind of also kind of sad, huh, Schmitty? Yeah, this place is a special place to play. Obviously, with the new turf, it's nice to play there. But uh, again, this place always is nice. I think Denny just needs to get a get a roof on here, and then this place <laughs> will be even be even better. Yeah, roof, and now with the nice artificial turf over there, that's. That's also a nice thing at the Field of Dreams, that's for sure. Yeah, the turf probably saved them a few games this year, that's for <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, if, with the spring the way it has been, it's been real wet. You can even tell it looks like the field here is a little wet in the infield, but uh, again, the turf definitely had to save them many games. Well, one thing too, with being wet here and different too, it changes things. I watched infield a little bit in the just hitting ground balls, getting through that grass was really slow. And that was always one thing that we were always concerned about is, you know, having to cheat your infielders a little bit up because the grass slows it down, but then that creates bigger gaps to hit through. And you know, yeah. yeah, it's definitely be different than the first time they played when they played at Field of Dreams yeah. on the turf. Some of those ground balls, you know, that got through the hole are not going to get through the hole today. You know, bunting could become key today. It's always a good bunting spot when the when the grass is kind of thick and, and wet. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see what these conditions do. You know, I always think when I was hitting infield with this kind of this kind of condition, I'd throw my back out because you got to hit them so hard. <laughs> and North now being introduced, Harry Feinberg, the fine center fielder, is running out the center. He's number four. Of course, uh, Brent Witter, four-time player here, playing shortstop. He'll bat second, and the other four-time four-year starter, Jacob uh, Nazy, will be sitting next to him there. He'll be third. And uh, the catching is Hunter Steger. He's just a sophomore. He's the future here. He'll be hitting in the cleanup. Bennett Becker now going to be playing some outfield. And then James Shear playing first, having a really nice senior season, too. Uh, Ethan Sherg, back from his concussion situation, pitched, I guess, last night against Preble in a 2-1 extra inning game loss. Devin Lallensack is going to DH for uh, Nathan Hendricks, who will play uh, second base. And pitching tonight will be uh, Peyton Voigt, the uh, junior. But uh, we'll take a minute here and uh, have the national anthem.
mentioned this to uh, Ryan before that it was really strange last year when uh, I did the TV game here and seen uh, Coach Goes and Coach Lumens out here for so many years. It was myself and Coach Kalais from South. It was really weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's strange for me to come back here and not see you out there, really. What Coach Goes is, has really kind of picked up right where you left off and has been doing a good job with these guys. You know, he's been, been really uh, fielding a competitive team the last couple years and been keeping them in the game. And obviously Coach Lumens has been doing a nice job over at South and trying to pick up that tradition where, where it used to be. Leading off for South is going to be uh, Dylan Tim. Dylan Tim's playing third base. He's just a junior, very nice kid. Uh, can play a lot of positions too. I know he can catch, play infield, outfield, plays all over. Uh, South, uh, kind of strange as opposed to North. They've been scoring some runs. They just can't uh, seem to uh, finish the game. Even in the last game, uh, Schmidt, the, the game, there was lots of guys left on base for uh, Sheboygan South. I mean, we're talking like 10 or 11 guys, so. Yeah, that's where today's gonna come down to just making sure everyone can make a play. You know, if someone makes a mistake, could you really make a big inning? Uh, probably come down to a couple clutch hits for both teams. Uh, again, if South been leaving a lot of guys on, they're gonna need that clutch hit. And, and North just needs to get something going here. Uh, they've been struggling to score runs throughout the throughout the year. It's been a tough, tough couple years for South the last two years, and I think you made a good point. They're trying to uh, start or build something going over at South. You gotta get more kids playing in town. That's That's one thing for sure. Yeah, we need to get people playing baseball all over the place, but definitely in Sheboygan, get that Continue that tradition. Hopefully, that Sheboygan Legion State title can, you know, maybe uh, encourage and motivate some others to get keep playing. Well, I think we'll see right away. I think strikes will be the the key and picking up the ball in this cold weather. See, I just jinxed it right away there. Just a little high. <laughs> Just foul there by Dylan. Attacking the fastballs though at the strikes. Got a good pitch to hit. Yeah. Not to give away any secrets, but I know Coach Goes sometimes works backwards with his pitchers. You know, starts guys off with curveballs more often probably than than most teams and There's a curve right away. You know, you get some coaches that let's establish not even throw a curveball to the second time through. And uh, at North, they, they he really mixes it up. Schmidt, and uh, you know, Eric Schmitz, I know, it does a lot of that too. Yeah, I think, I think Coach Schmitz is now calling the pitches for, for yeah. Coach, and I know that, that takes a lot for Coach Goes to give up that responsibility. Oh, yeah. But uh, Coach Schmitz has been doing a good job throughout oh, this yeah. year. Yeah, he did that for me too. Um, off and on. Most of the time, though, I had my guys call their own, and then if we needed to, or if it was a big person, you know, then we, we kind of talked, and Eric would call stuff. And there's a walk right off the bat. Name of the game, throwing strikes and picking the ball up, and again, the leadoff walks usually come back to bite you. Elliot Pethon, another junior. Today he's playing in center, but again, a player that can play in a lot of different places. And a good pitch by Voight there, Peyton to get ahead. Early in the game, coach, what are you thinking? Are you playing small ball or are you letting the guys swing? I think because he walks, I think he's he's gonna he's gonna let him swing. But the way the weather is, I would, you know, I would be wouldn't be afraid to to play small ball today because I think runs are going to be at a premium and this isn't going to get anything done. 
Yeah, I think when you're a struggling team, I think trying to get a lead early is, is always yep. key. You know, I think you get that mentality of, of when you've lost a bunch of games in a row, if you can somehow get a lead, some, uh, some good things might happen. Here's Ben Soik, leading hitter for uh, South, hitting 273 on the season. You know, he scored 10 runs already this year. It just goes to show that South can put up some, some runs. It's hard to believe he's a senior already. <laughs> but I guess I've been out of it for two years too. He's played, I, I believe, at least three years on the varsity. Maybe got a little experience in the, uh, as a freshman. Good jump there by, uh, by Dylan there on the, on the steal. I think he probably would have had that bag taken, but attacking the fastball again, looks like that's what their plan is at hitting. And you don't know if there was a hit and run on there or what, but uh, he was swinging. I have it, uh, wasn't there a strike on the first pitch? I had it one and two, I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, I got two and one. Do you have two, two and one? one? I thought the first pitch was a strike two. You must be right. Opening inning. North-South, last game of the season. Chris Wright along with Ryan Schmitz. Mike Martin, I believe, is at the Brewer game tonight against another red team. And there's a strikeout. Good job battling back there for Peyton. Coming back and tacked them with some fastballs there and got him, got him swinging. Lars Krugel. Lars Krugel is senior. Lars a three sport athlete. Football, basketball, and baseball. I love it. And there's that curveball again for a strike. Good opportunity to possibly run here and try to get in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, you might as well take a chance now. I would have probably gone on that first pitch and with the curveball, may have had it stolen. Big jump. Huge jump, might even get third here. So we're gonna call that a stolen base. Wild pitch. And a wild pitch, huh? Or just a wild pitch, what do you think? I think the base would have definitely been stolen. So that's, uh, uh, no question that's about that. Base. He got quite the jump. He was halfway to second by the time he delivered it. So now another wild pitch here and we get a run. I think that must have hit the plate or something. That makes the count one and two. Again, can South come up with that clutch hit, which eluded him in the first game so much. Hunter's got to be on, ready to block a pitch here if he's throwing a curveball. Yep, there's the curve and a liner. Well, one walk for South. That runner has stayed after a half inning of play. It's nothing, nothing. Back at Wildwood Park. North's turn on offense. North comes in at, I have them at seven and 14. Five and 12 in league play. Uh, North, to say the least, has struggled this year on offense. Schmitty, 11 games I have them, have zero and one run. 
and then add two more games, excuse me, three more games of two or three runs. Um, so over half the games this year, they have not Ooh. scored more than a run. Yeah, that can uh, that can hurt the, <laughs> the psyche after a little while, but a lot of it could probably do with the weather too. We haven't had a very good spring. It's hard to hit in this cold and a lot of, a lot of rainy, wet games, but uh, I think their top of the order is gonna be key. Hopefully they can uh, try to muster and muster out a run and try to get a clutch hit today. And with the tournament starting, there's no question that I, I agree 100% that you got to get the first three guys going. You have three seniors, uh, Feinberg with his good speed, and then, of course, two great hitters in Witter and uh, Nazy to uh, back that up. And uh, if those three guys don't go, then, you know, the team's not going to go. Yeah, hopefully they can start. Uh, all it takes is one. You know, those guys are such good hitters. It takes one good, one good swing, one hole to find, and you know, I really can start snowballing from there. Now, Harry's gone through a little bit of a slump of the second half of the season, but I'll tell you, this kid takes a lot of pitches and uh, follows a lot of pitches off. He's really a good leadoff hitter and an outstanding center fielder. Um, draws a lot of walks. Yeah, in last night's game against Preble, he started, he led off with a 11 at pitch at bat, got a walk against a, a Vanderbilt recruit, so you know he's gonna try to do whatever he can to get on. Trey Klessing is the pitcher. Oh, good job there by the catcher there, Colin Brennan to, uh, move his glove a little bit. Good catcher like that can save uh, pitches and there's a nice simple ground ball and an out. It's a great start for Trey there, really attacking the hitters and that grass really ate that ball up too. It's gonna be, be hard to hit one through the infield today. And here's senior uh, Brent Witter. He's uh, and in that two hole since uh, he's been a freshman. Start him off with a curveball. My guess is he's seen a lot of first pitch curveballs this year. <laughs> that one rolled in on him. That was a nice pitch there by Trey. See where this 0-2 pitch goes. Ooh, not a bad pitch. You know, normally you don't want it that close, but uh, that one could have drawn a, a strikeout. We had a tough play. Great play Woo. there. Wow, what a play by Tim and a really nice play by Soik on this end. I don't even know which one was the better play. That's a great play by the third baseman and a great tag over there by, uh, by Mr. Soik on the, coming here's, off the base. Here's Witter trying to beat it out and then the clunk to the head. Good camera work there, Richard. That brings up Jacob Nazy or Nice, depending through the years what we used to call him. Jacob. Uh, Another outstanding hitter, ninth in the league in hitting at 375. He had four hits against South in the last one, Schmidt. Yeah, he's going to be a key here, like we said. Hopefully, they're going to need to get something going here with two outs, but he's down early here, 0 2. We'll see what, uh, what Trey comes with on the two strikes. Yeah, he had a perfect, perfect game the last time. And wow. Great inning. Great inning for Klesig. Well, that ends our first. The South's going to come to bat. We have no score.
Back at Wildwood Park there, you can see by our fans just how chilly it is. They're all bundled up. We, of course, get the booth, which is nice. Now we have new windows, which we can up, up here, which is <laughs> really nice. They used to never have windows that opened, Schmidty. I don't know if you knew that, but it made it very difficult to listen to the game in the summer. Um, you know, what does the umpire, you know, changing things and, you know, made it very difficult. So brand new windows in here. We have a new deck. Have they opened the windows all spring? Probably not. Uh -huh. Well, we've only been here twice, <laughs> so <laughs> I doubt it. Trey Klessing, another really good athlete. And a nice job pitching in that upper first, top of the first there. Good pitch to get ahead there from Payton. Other than an opening lock, both these pitchers have really been attacking the zone. Good miss there on 0 and 2. There's a fly ball. Should be a nice, simple play there. Sherg on that catch. And with one out, brings up the designated hitter. Mason Kohler, he's just a sophomore. He follows that first pitch away, and again, as Schmidt mentioned, getting ahead of that first batter is Peyton Voigt. Nice shot of Peyton there. Peyton's a good kid too, Ryan. I know he also uh, works at a mm -hmm. grocery store. <laughs> See him every once in a while. Good pitch there. See if both these pitchers can keep utilizing those corners that they seem like they might be getting here today. Ooh, that's a really nice curveball there. And second strikeout of the game for Voigt. That curveball, he got a little more on top of the first one. He kind of spun in there, got on top of that one, and really got some good bite. Brings up the catcher, Colin Brennan. Brennan hitting in the seventh spot. Wide receiver on the football team. First pitch was a little bit high. Colin, too, is just a junior. There's a good pitch. Good swing on a 2-0 pitch. I'd like to see a good hard swing there on 2-0. Good hack. There went foul. One strike away here from a nice quick inning here for Peyton also. Yeah. Well, I, as we mentioned, I think this is going to be a quick ball game as long as they throw strikes. Runs are going to be at a premium. Runs at full. And he got him. Second strike out of the inning ends the inning for South. At the end of an inning and a half, still no score.
Leading off for uh, North will be their catcher, Hunter Steger. He's hitting 300, over 300 here in league play. And for a sophomore to be putting that four hole behind uh, Jacob Nazy and Brent Witters, a pretty tough role for the young man. Yeah, talking to Coach Goes today, he said that uh, Hunter's really come on for them. He's kind of moved up the lineup throughout the throughout the year and has had a really, really good season for him. And you know, obviously they haven't been scoring runs, but without him, they probably scored less. There's a double chance right there, right down the line. Hunter going to be digging around first on his way to second. And it is a leadoff double, and just as Schmidt mentioned, Coach Ghost says he's been hot, and there you go. Great swing there. Took that inside pitch right down the line. Stayed fair, and good hustle by the big guy. Carson Kramer going to be running for the catcher in high school baseball. You can, what they call courtesy run, which basically means the catcher can have a seat and rest and uh, get his gear back on. It's kind of more of a speed up rule, but uh, if I had kids that could run, I kept my catcher out there. Yeah, you always try to find that guy that can just be your courtesy runner. <laughs> right? You're hoping a guy tries out that maybe is some kind of track star that you yeah. can utilize. And obviously still need to teach the game of base running. It's, uh, it's, it's an art to be a good base runner. So first hit of the game for North. Has a man in scoring position and here's Bennett Becker. And Bennett Becker's gonna line one right up the middle on the first pitch. Coach Goh's gonna hold the runner there. And just like that, as did in the first game, it's the bottom of the bottom of the lineup that is coming up big for North. It's good base running there. I thought he had a freeze. You know, that, that ball could have kept Karen to the outfielder. Good freeze there. That's why he didn't score on that. But nobody out. You don't want to take a chance now. Becker at first. Kramer at third and James Shearer who's having a nice season as well the senior first baseman comes to the plate and knowing coach goes things might be moving that's an inside pitch that Shear fouls yeah, we'll see if the lefty, with the lefty in the mound, if that's going to try to control some of the running game. But uh, as we know, Coach Goes loves to be aggressive, and yep. this is a great time to be aggressive here with first and third, nobody out. There he goes. There's the throw. Cut back to the pitcher and gave up the stolen base. Well, now North's going to be looking for that clutch hit that we were talking about earlier today. Uh, it's going to come down to who can get that big hit. Nobody out. Need to put something in play, try to make something happen here. North, excuse me, South playing their defense about halfway, it looks like, Schmidt. And it gets knocked foul. Well, with, with this infield right now, he might have to play up just to, <laughs> just to get more. any kind of play for, for yeah. first. So I think where the middle infielders are, if it's hit to them, I think it still would be tough to, tough to make a play at home just because of... The grass is going to eat it up. Two and two count. If you're sheer here, you want to put the ball in play. That dove in there for a ball. Got to do what you can to put this ball in play and give, your ch give a chance to score a run. That one's going to be put in play, but out of play. Foul. Outside painted corner, and Shear looks at it, and that's out number one. This could be a good opportunity to maybe have a squeeze here with North North struggling to score runs. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Goes gets something going here uh, with one out and guys on second and third. Ethan Sherga, senior, pretty good speed. He follows the first one back. Big punch out there by Klessing, but he still only has one out.
Good pitch there, I thought, because that's normally a good time to squeeze. If you're going to squeeze, is maybe on that after you get down in the count. Would have been tough there. I think he's going to trust uh, Sherg to put it in play. Let's the ball go low. Yeah, normally here you're just trying to have a guy, you know, hit something hard. But if you have been struggling, you know, it never hurts to try to get something going, some, some runners in action, and sometimes you got to put the pressure on the defense. There's our bunt. Looked like more of a safety squeeze there. Uh, guy in third did not take off. Carson Kramer did not take off, so it looked like a little safety squeeze. But now we got two strikes. Going to have to put something in play here. Nice job by Sherg there. Oh, it's going to give up a run. You know, when that ball there by Soik, when he had to go to the outside there, I didn't think that was the right decision to do. Yeah, this early in the game, I think you got to try to get an out. You know, yep. Now all of a sudden you're putting yourself in where you could give up a big inning here. And uh, since runs might be at a premium, you don't want to give up two. You could have had two outs and only given up one, but now we got guys on first and third. Yep, I would have taken the out there. That brings up the, another senior, Devin Lallensack. And again, Sure runs real well as two, so we'll see if he gets moving over there. Yeah. And he grounds one up the middle. And that was just, uh, did not know what to do with that situation on that slow grounder. So a fielder's choice, give him an RBI, run scores, makes it two to nothing. Again, that's where that previous play can come back. Where yep. that, that could have been the third out if we, they got an out there and only would have given up one. But now North up 2-0. Leads up, brings up the uh, Devin Lounsack. Excuse me. At first, Nathan Hendricks at the plate. And something I don't like to do is lead off with my nine hitter. But they're aggressive and he gets thrown out. That'll end the inning. But North picks up two runs on a couple base hits. Leaves no one stranded. At the end of two complete, it's North two and South zero. Here it will be Cameron Meyer. Cameron's a, another nice player, senior. You know, Tommy, my son, coached him in Legion, liked him a lot, liked Tim a lot. Doing Tim, the leadoff hitter. And the uh, most important thing, I, as the old cliche goes, when you get two runs, you want your pitcher to throw strikes with the lead. Yeah, once you get that lead as a pitcher, you want to go out there and have try to have a quick one, keep that momentum building. Uh, this should be hopefully try to be a shutdown inning to keep the momentum going. Yeah, you have the eight and nine hitters up for South. Want to attack them. He's got ahead of the count here, so doing what he what he should be trying to do. And there's a strikeout. Three strikeouts in a row. He's got a nice little rhythm going right now. Brings up the right fielder, Colin Magnan. He's just a sophomore. Colin Magnan. 
Again, Voigt gets ahead on the count and keeps pounding that strike zone, and why not? Yeah, he has a real nice rhythm going right now. You can see his mechanics, everything is coming right down, right down the hill, and see what he can do with his 0-2 pitch. Good pitch, a little bit out. And there's another strikeout. That's now five in the game on South first nine batters, and it brings back to the top of the order. Dylan Tim, who drew a walk back in the first. Well, Green Bay Preble with a win tonight. They played the pier, will uh, win another conference championship. They used both their big pitchers though last night to beat North to at least get a share of the title. Yeah, is that four years in a row now, at least a share? Uh, I am not sure. And they got stud pitching for next year as well coming back. Uh, Bayport, who now entered the rankings of state, is in ninth in state, second in the league. Followed by DePierre and Manitowoc having a nice year. And there's a second consecutive walk to Tim. Ashwaubenon is fifth in the league, followed by Pulaski, Notre Dame, Southwest and North, and then South. Elliot Pethon at the plate for South. There goes Tim, and he's gonna slide. Oh my! Out! <laughs> it's the call. I thought he had a nice slide there. Yeah, I thought he might have snuck in there, but again, we're a little farther away than the umpire. Wow, ball did beat him, but I thought it was a nice slide. But that's gonna end the South threat with a throw out at second. And at the end of two and a half, North, as you see, is up two to nothing. Leading off for uh, North would be Nathan Hendricks. He was the uh, batter when uh, Lonsack got thrown out. Mm -hmm. Any of your thoughts on uh, running on an eight hitter to lead off the nine? Well, it's not the pitcher in the NL, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes your nine hitter can be, you know, that second lead off. Yep. I think, yep. uh, you know, you take a chance and, you know, all of a sudden you steal more bases. All you need is that little hit or air to, to score a run there in that last thing and try to steal another one. So I yeah. think uh, you can always look at it both ways. I always look at it as that I want to get my top around quicker. And I, the, the more my best three guys, which are supposed to be my one, two, three guys are there, the, the better, you know, just a simple thing. I agree with you when you're ahead two to nothing and, you know, by golly, that's what coach goes likes to do is run. There's no doubt about it. Um, but uh, that's what he does and likes. Yeah, you know, you look at it where if Nathan can get on, all of a sudden you got yep. another guy in front of your top guys also to give them yep. uh, maybe hopefully an RBI chance and try to get those top three going. But see if he can battle here behind in the count. Good pitch there by Trey Klesig right on the outside corner. Yeah, his third strikeout. 
And it'll bring us back to the top where uh, Harry Feinberg is going to lead off. Harry didn't play for me. He, uh, I think he was in Colorado or something, something like that, and moved here. And so his last two years here, um, I didn't have him as a freshman or a sophomore. But uh, when he came, we knew he could play a little bit. For the second consecutive time, he hits it right to second base. And an easy four to three. Meyer to Soik to bring up Brent Witter, who grounded out to first on a, excuse me, to third on a great play by uh, Dylan Tim to rob him of an infield hit. a number of times this year, headed to uh, Evansville to play. Be a little warmer in uh, Indiana to play than in Wisconsin for the yeah, next uh, four years. I think he'll, I think he'll enjoy enjoy that weather. He's gonna, he's gonna have this weather already in early March down there. So he'll, he'll definitely enjoy the warmer weather. Well, I've always, I've been saying through the basketball and the baseball seasons with him, I, I take nine of him on my team any day. He's a hard worker, really good kid. Uh, well, you know, it makes me feel old because he, he was my bad boy for Cleveland Wildcats <laughs> a few games. I think he told me he picked up my bat after a home run. And that's kind of how his season's been going. Hitting the ball hard, but right to the opponent. So Witter lines out in the third. That ends the third. As you can see, the score still north two, south Nothing. Be their two hitter, Elliot Pethon. Unofficially, I have 46 pitches for Peyton. I don't know what you have, Schmidt. Yeah, somewhere around there. <laughs> he also was batting in the last inning when Tim got thrown out trying to steal. We'll see if South can get something going here with their 2-3-4 up. This is a great opportunity, you know, second time around, see if they can attack that fastball before he gets ahead with the curveball. There the curveball is right there. It's a good pitch by, by Payton. It keeps it down there. He's not going to get hurt much at all today. There's going to be a lot of balls hit on the ground. Both teams have played quite a few games, so they've seen a lot of pitching by now. You would think the offense has caught up a little bit, but as we've mentioned, both teams have struggled to score this year. And the weather feels like it still should be the first week of the season. Yep. One's a little up. Full count here. 
big yep. pitch for both teams. That's skied out to Feinberg, and that's going to be an easy play for him. And there's one away. Brings us back to uh, senior Ben Soik. Ben also catches. Played some uh, shortstop, now playing first. He can play all over. I know he did that last summer, too, for the Legion team. Here at South playing first. And that first pitch there by Voigt's a little inside. Yeah, Voigt has a really nice curveball when he really gets on top of that. Every once in a while he kind of drops down and kind of spins, but when he gets on top of it, it's a real good curveball like that one right there. Yep. Some of the fans not happy, but I thought I agree with you. That was a good pitch. Yeah, that real good bite there at the end, got on top of it. And then comes back. That makes that fastball seem a lot faster after he comes down with those two curveballs. Tough pitch to catch up to, especially up there at the letters. Yeah, one and two the count to Soik. That one's left out over the plate a little bit too much and uh, fouled out of play. deck is Lars Krugel, I believe. Not too bad of a turnout, though, for attendance for a, for yep. a cold uh, cold May day with a lot of things going on at this time. At one time, didn't we used to play north-south games at night? Yep. Yep. I know Coach Goes wanted to do that, too, and he was my JV coach, so he could get his kids to play out here, which was a nice thing to do, except that the games were, like, in early April, and it was 40 degrees when we played. <laughs> Yeah, you would have think normally like a game like today would have been a great opportunity, but it yeah. would, wouldn't have worked out really nice then either. And we could have seen the new lights. But uh, with the weather the way it is, it's better that we do it this way, I think. Another full count. Nope, two and two. Yep, two and two. I have six pitches, four strikes, and two balls. And there's a little chopper That's foul. That's off his foot. Yep. Good call there. The other the other day in the Brewer game, they couldn't see that one off Arcia's foot, and then Council yeah. went nuts. So we don't need to oh see yeah. anyone going nuts today. Yep. Now we go full. South making them work a little bit more here this inning. Getting the pitch total up. He's had, I unofficially have him at 60, which we're going to talk about after Soik's at bat here. About three years ago, they changed things to have a 100 pitch minimum. And there's a sky ball again. Feinberg going to go on to that. Any thoughts by you on uh, the pitch? Is it a uh, good rule? Is it enough pitches? Should they have more pitches? Any? Uh... Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it was definitely needed. I mean, I think uh, I think there's some coaches out there maybe abused it, but I think uh, again the pitch total is probably at the right spot it's just for the safety of the game, right? It's for the safety of the players. These these guys are young. They're growing. Uh, obviously, some of these guys are getting older and going to go to college, and they're going to be throwing maybe more pitches. But I think at this rate. Uh, you you want to try to take it easy, as easy as you can on the arms and try to build that up. But uh, I think the, the Baseball Coaches Association did a good job in, in kind of with the WIA and trying to help them through it. And I think throughout the couple of years, they, they made a pretty good process. Yeah, I always thought there's a ball to, to Lars Krugel. I always thought it should be maybe 105. And my justification to that was 15 pitch innings. And... I mean, if you're a strikeout pitcher, you know, and you're a really good pitcher, you're going to have a lot of pitches. Yeah, it definitely, and that, definitely rewards that contact guy. Yep, and that hurts, hurts, uh, you know, a lot of 
teams, you know, and our some I shouldn't say a lot, but some of our guys. There's a little grounder off to Jacob. Throw over there to first. We're gonna keep it here and finish up this conversation. Uh, I just saw he thought that 100 pitch was just a little light, maybe 105, 110. Um, it just gave, you know, it, it hurts the strikeout guy. And, uh, you know, they're cruising along and you're up maybe one to nothing and all of a sudden, you know, like Vorpal had this year, Ben Vorpal for North threw a six and two third no inning, he ran out of pitches and he yeah. couldn't complete his no, no hitter. Yeah, you know, something I would think about is earlier in the year, maybe having that pitch total where it is and then maybe as you, as you go throughout the year, maybe add, you know, add 10 pitches as it gets a little warmer, as these guys have, have gotten conditioned Obviously, they added the one week ahead of the practice, ahead of uh, official practice time to be able to have pitchers and catchers, which has helped. But yep. I, I don't, you know, in the big leagues, they get there three weeks earlier, and they, you know, spring training is all about the pitchers. So I think, uh, I think sometimes maybe they could revise it a little bit, adding those pitches when you maybe the last week of the couple of last couple of weeks of the year throughout the playoffs. So by that time, every pitcher is kind of conditioned, and uh, you know, obviously the weather is getting a little nicer then. Yeah. I that was the only thing that I didn't. They had to make. Uh, I know when the uh, you mentioned the coaches association, they said it was one of the things was days off of rest because that's something. So they had to kind of give and take. If they would have gone with a higher pitch count, they would have me meant that a kid would have had to sit out like four days. I believe it would have been, and which you know, coaches obviously don't want to what that situation they so there was a give and take yeah it's definitely a change from the innings to the pitches though you know when you're coaching you definitely have to keep an eye on it before you just had a you know you had seven innings within a certain amount of days and definitely has changed the game a little bit i think coaches probably even strategize a little bit differently you know you got maybe more closers that can go a little bit at that at that point too well leading off here is jacob nazy jacob uh Ball and a strike on him. We're in the bottom of the fourth, halfway through, 2 nothing lead for North. And uh, just like the first game, the damage has been done by the lower two-thirds of the uh, North lineup where, with a walk and a hit. I know the board says three hits, but I only have them for one. <laughs> I have a fielder's choice by Sherg and a fielder's choice by Lallensack. I have two hits, Steger and Becker. Stager and Becker. Double and oh, yeah, the double. You're the right. Middle. Yep, the double. You're right. The double and the two hits is right. Back to back hits. Yep, two hits is right. Um, and there's going to be a tough play again, and this one's going to be dropped. Go ahead. Yeah, it's all about picking up the ball, right? It's all about throwing strikes, and there's that grass kind of ate that up there. And hit uh, or an air. That's a that's an air. That's an e five. It's going to be a tough play. He was hustling down the line, yep. but I think it's one that you got to make at yep. this level. And mentioning those hits by North, Steger is the one who had the uh, double right down the line. And for the second time in the four innings, North has their leadoff runner on. Uh, in conference play, Jacobs only has one stolen base. Yeah, Jacob's more uh, used to jogging around the bases, right? Yeah, the I would goes say. Out of the fence. Running in the second on a double. And the old cliche goes too, if you can start walking guys, all of a sudden the defense falters and here a leadoff air uh, leads to two quick balls by Tussie and there was a high fly ball and the left fielder can't really see it. He comes in now and makes the play. That was an adventure a little bit. That's a big out right there, though. I, I don't know if the sun peaked out. doesn't look like it, but it looks <laughs> like he really fought through it and got that out. That's a big out for South. Uh, you know, all of a sudden that drops and he got first and second. But now yep. we got one out with one guy on. Here's Becker, who's singled up the middle. Now Coach Go is going to count on him a lot next year. Bennett. First pitch skins off the plate. Yeah. 
Jacob getting a nice big lead over there. Not going anywhere, and it's a comebacker, and again, off the glove, Plessing throws the first and gets the out. Did a real nice job recovering there and still able to get an out. Obviously, he'd love to have got the lead runner, maybe turned a double play, but did a real good job recovering and got the out at first. Sets up a situation for James Shear again. Came up with two guys in base last inning and did not come up with anything. We'll see what he does here the second time. First pitch is a bit high. Brennan trying to uh, help out his pitcher there with his glove movement. Here's an opportunity for North to get an honor and run in and you know, make that air really hurt that let off the inning. Good pitch there by Klesig. Pitches up. Unlike uh, White, who numbers are in the 60s, I only have Plessing in the 40s, and there's a ground ball this time fielded by, uh -oh. and there's another error by Tim. Kind of nonchalant instead of going towards the base to throw yeah, in. He really didn't follow that throw over there to third. Kind of just stood up, um, stood up. And when you stand up, when you're infield and you don't stay low, bad things happen usually. And that ball just kind of spiked in there. Good job for Ben Stoick knocking that down. Saved a run. Yep. See if we see some action here with first and third. Uh, possibly trying to steal second. Right back at us. Well, Shear's not a blazer, but uh, I don't think I, I don't know. I wouldn't give up the, the out, but you're right. He likes to run. And there he goes. And it was kind of the. Trying to get that throw down there and get in a pickle and try to, you know, maybe find a way to score that run from third. But uh, South wasn't having any of it. No, and now Shear, excuse me, Shear gets stuck in an 0-2 count as well. Goes right at him and there's a liner. It's going to be trouble. Caught. That nice a great play. jump there from the center fielder. Elliott really got a good jump on that ball. And that ends the North threat here in the fourth. The end of four innings of play, it's still North two, South nothing. The fifth base for the Red Wings. Pitcher, Trey There. Looks like uh, the are really playing on the pole. With that swing, I think that's probably a good idea. Got 
And there's a ground ball over to Hendricks. Throw to Shear. And just like that, there's one away. As uh, Mason Collar, the DH, comes up. What do you miss about coaching? I miss winning, coach. <laughs> nah, nah. You always, you know, when you're coaching, you always miss. Your, uh, your last game was at the state tournament, and yeah, that, that, that was, had uh, to be special. That was quite the experience, yeah. It was, uh, it was special to go out there. And, and there's going to be the oh. first hit for South. As it gets between the two fielders. Yeah, as you know, coach, what you miss is you miss, uh, miss, miss the coaches. You miss that, uh, you know, hanging out with those guys. But you also miss the relationships you you make with all the players. You know, there's nothing like uh, like the bond you make with the coaches and players. And you, know, you and me still have a great bond. And you know, you like you like making those relationships and trying to help these young guys grow. Do you miss the competition, the competitiveness? Yeah, uh, you miss competing. Yep. Uh, but you know, I think you can find competition in a lot of different different aspects in life and obviously I you know a golf course I compete a lot and I, I don't get any better but uh, I, I, I sure compete a lot but uh, yeah you, you know you miss competing uh, you miss you miss winning I don't miss the losing part and trying to yeah. get home and try to fall asleep and try to you know think about how are we gonna we get better or um, I don't miss uh, thinking about how we're gonna fundraise ten thousand dollars so we can <laughs> do this or do that but uh, you know it's definitely missed and you know, I'm sure I'll get back at it sometime soon again well, and unfortunately, too, at the state tournament, of all the teams you had to play, you had to play your conference uh, rival, Sun Prairie, <laughs> which is never a good draw. Yeah, uh, you know, in it's conference uh, play, uh, non-conference play, tournament play, <laughs> or at the state tournament. You know, Rob at, Hamilton's at, at got that such time, a great program. At that time, it was you no, know, it wasn't a bad thing. Our definitely, our kids were very motivated because we, you know, it's the one team that. When I was in boy, we never ever beat. Uh, it was the one team we never never beat. We lost many one-run games, like we did at the state tournament. We lost lost a tight one, close one, yep. one-run game. But uh, you know, a lot of respect for those guys. They've had a great program for a long time in Sun Prairie, and you know, it's one of those programs you look up to. You want to try to become, and uh, you try to keep that tradition. And a lot of times now, they win because of tradition. Yes. Yep. And it just builds. And Colin Brennan, now at the up with three and all count, and uh, we have one out and a runner on, and there's a nice pitch there. I would think, I'm not not gonna say what's gonna happen here, but I would think that possibly that uh, Ben Vorpal could be your bullpen guy today, and there's a walk in. I would no. think that someone might be getting loose here soon because uh, this could be a scary point of the time here with guys on first and second. It looks like Schmidty's going to come out here try to maybe buy some time in the bullpen. Yeah, you have the bottom of the order up, um, but I'll tell you, Cameron Meyer's a, a tough out. Um, but a, a good time to settle him down after giving up the first hit for South. Peyton Voigt's really pitched a great game, though. I mean, he's yep. really attacked the hitters. Uh, he's got now, what, three walks, only given up that one hit. But uh, for the most part, he's really thrown a lot of strikes. And, you know, you throw strikes in this weather, uh, you're going to get some quick outs. And, and when he has the chance, he has, he's had some strikeouts also. Unofficially, I have him at 73 pitches. Remember, the magic number is 100. And so, I mean, pitch-wise, he's doing a very, pitch count-wise, he's doing a nice job. All it takes is one pitch here to get out of this jam. Uh, so they're probably looking for a ground ball to the, to the shortstop winner here. Maybe he can turn on himself. See what uh, Meyer does here on the first pitch. He's going to drag bunt one. Not a bad play. That was a great idea there. Uh, third baseman was back. You know, that's one foot to the right on foul territory. That's a base hit, and we got the bases loaded with one out. You know, it's a game of inches, coach. That falls in there and totally changes things for. Uh, Looks like they're conferencing here. I think Coach Goes asked that if he was out of the box when he when he hit that. Uh, no way. Good idea to ask, but. Uh, Always a great idea to ask, <laughs> but I, I don't think that that was the case there. Because especially with so outside of a pitch, if he was out of the box, there's no way we would have reached it there. Coach Lumens talking to Coach Goes. Coach Goes talking to Coach Lumens. 
must not be too cold down there because coach wanted to delay that a little bit. So <laughs> now Jacobs up on the grass. There's a high pitch and we're going to get a throw back and almost hit the umpire. Witter cheating over for the left hander. And uh, Ah, good idea there, but sometimes uh, you know a runner could take advantage of that. Also, if you yep. see thinks you're going to do that, take off to third, and you know some more bad things can happen. Yeah. Hunter not afraid to throw that. There's a nice cut, but he's got to keep that front foot in, coach. Great swing, good pitch to hit. Probably wanted yep. that one back. Now he's down in the count, going to have to battle here. And he does. This that must is be trouble. A hit. Good job not throwing that. That would have been bad things happening if he throws that to first. That was a, I think he pulled his head and everything and the ball just kind of curved in there. Welcome to spring baseball, Wildwood. Second hit of the inning is trouble. That's the game of baseball though, right? Those are the inches we were just talking about. Yep. Basically he tried to bunt one right there and he ends up swinging one. And I believe we're gonna have a pinch, pinch hitter. hitter here. Number 23, Matt Steffen, going to be doing some pinch hitting here. He's in the nine spot. He's a junior. Big opportunity here, pinch hitting. Base is loaded, one out. Gotta be looking for something that he can hit right now in the outfield. I'd be playing double play depth. If I was Nathan Hendricks, I'd be cheating up a little bit yeah, more I think for that double play. I think he's playing pretty far back. I think yep. any kind of ball hit to him, it's going to be tough to turn that double play because the grass is just eating it up. Base is full of Red Wings. 2 nothing North. 2-0. And 2-0 and oh on the pinch hitter, Matt Steffen. Dylan Tim on deck. And on a 2-0 pitch, Stefan swings on an inside pitch. I like the aggressiveness, but that one might have been a little up. Might have been a little up. That would have been taken big time there. 2-0 pitch, nine hitter. And that time Hunter tried to get that extra. So now it's, instead of ball four, we have a three and one count. Real big spot in the game, top of the order on deck. Way to come back there to even up the count. No place to put him. Two inside fastballs. Got Stefan. I would go right back there if I was Voigt. And he does. But this one has fouled off. Gotta love the battle though. It might have been a little off, but he's trying to protect. He's not trying to go down looking. What are you throwing? Gotta throw a strike. You whatever, don't care where it is? Whatever, whatever you can, you gotta throw a strike. He does, and that one's fouled off too. That one was a little bit more over the plate, won the handle there. Stefan a little slow getting the hands through. This point of the game, you can't be, you know, trying to trying to hit one on the right in the corner. You gotta just try to make sure you're attacking, try to make them beat you. Oh, and there's ball four and he strikes them out. You know what happens at that point? You get in kind of that swing mode. You're just trying to battle and battle. You get in that swing mode. You can't happen to chase one. Brings up the leadoff hitter, Dylan Tim. Dylan has not put a ball in play yet. He's got two walks in the first and the third. And that one's right down Main Street. I'm Colin Brennan at second. I got to make sure I'm getting a real good secondary oh, yeah. here so I can score on a hit. I agree with you. I was just thinking the same thing. And there's a nice swerving curve. And Voight battling back. Hunter's got to be ready to block a pitch here again. Two strikes. Might bounce that curveball in. And again, South comes up empty. Just like game one, leaving runners on base. 
Voigt gets out of it with a couple of big strikeouts, which will take us to the bottom of the fifth. North two, south zero. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Back here at Wildwood, Chris Wright along with Ryan Schmitz, Mike Martin not here tonight. It's our last broadcast for WSCS, but I know uh, for sports we're done, but I know we'll be doing the uh, 4th of July parade in uh, July. Didn't know I did that, did you? I did not, <laughs> Coach. I did not know that. Marty and I are jack of all trades. Guys do it all. <laughs> How long have you guys been doing this now? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, I started probably when you were still in high school, when I was coaching freshman basketball, I would do some games. And Coach Desatel allowed me to do like home games and stuff for TV after I co coached my freshman games. <laughs> Devin Lounsack up, so I would say. What a generous guy Coach Desatel was. Oh, yeah, huh? yeah, 20, 21 years maybe, been doing this. 21 About years. 98, 96, 97. Did games at the Armory. We had a, Stu Hoffensberger was a, another announcer we had and he was excellent. Uh, he did play-by-play -play in Madison and uh, he was, he would, couldn't always make it so, or Marty couldn't so I was kind of like the sub guy. And then uh, he uh, left and Marty took over and we've been doing it ever since. And there's a th three, and one now count to Devin Lounsack, senior. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning, a grounder up the middle. And there's a nice strike on the corner. Again, Klessing not in trouble for pitches. Um, and there's a shot by Devin right down the line, and there's gonna be our third hit for North. She'll bring up Nathan Hendricks and looks like down the line Ben Borpel is warming up for North. So oh yeah, he could be uh, the next pitcher, maybe even this next inning. Yeah, I have uh, Voigt at 88 pitches unofficially, and uh, watch for Nathan to put one down here. Great bunting opportunity here with your nine hitter up. Nathan's got great speed, so again, if he gets a good bunt down, could be, an, be easily a base hit. Yeah, the bullpens are under construction, so you have to warm up on the uh, warning track, or the, it's a track around the inside, I guess it's not the warning track, but. Watch for him to put one down, Marty. It's outside. Now, if I'm Stiles, Dylan, Tim, I'd come in, uh, I'd come up even more. I'm gonna expect this bunt. There's the bunt, but it's foul. That's one looked like he was trying to be a little greedy with, trying to get maybe for more of a base hit instead of really trying to give himself up for a sacrifice. Here's a nice bunt. Nobody's at second. Nobody's at third. I mean, that's... But a sacrifice nonetheless. 
Yeah, very, jo very good job there, just making sure he got the bunt down and got the guy over for the top of the order. So here we go. We got our top three guys coming up, like we mentioned earlier, earlier in the game. Yep. None of the three have a hit yet. Feinberg, as I mentioned, great eye at the plate. balls, the last thing you want to do is put two guys on base for Witter and Nazy. Looks like Klesi could be getting a little tired. You know, when you're getting tired, that ball really starts coming up. And they're trying to steal on 3-0. Not. And uh, looks like there was a definitely a, a difficult tag there. I think he tagged them with the glove and had the ball in his hand. Not sure if he got the ball there also, but uh, I'm not really sure why we're running there, Coach. I don't know. Fooled me. 3-0 and oh with your best hitters coming up. You don't want to take that opportunity. You shouldn't even be in this opportunity of trying to beg for a call from the umpires. Where's Coach Loomis? Here he comes. I think that might be the right call. I think he did tag him with the glove and had the ball in his hand, but. Uh, I agree with Dylan Tim. I think he had the ball in the glove, and when it came out, when it came out, I can, under, I can understand why Coach goes, sorry, it wasn't like it was. I mean, he, how is he going to have the ball in his hand? He didn't catch it barehanded. Hey, I'm still just shocked the guy was running. <laughs> I was too. I was too. I... Sometimes you wish that umpires would just make the call because it wasn't the right play. <laughs> I, I, I. I don't know. Yeah, if I'm Coach Lumens, I'm not very happy there, though. I think, you know, you had the first call and. You know, if, if he dropped it, I can see it. But I thought what Dylan did was correct. He hung on with two hands. And there's the base hit to knock him in because the infield was playing in, and Harry delivers an RBI single. And now that call uh, looms, no pun intended, large. I think there was a call like that uh, on the first North-South game over there, down in the third base yes. when they were stealing third, and I think the, Same the thing home plate umpire over, overruled it also. You don't see that very often on a steal play like that, where you're having the home plate umpire overturn it. Well, I know Harry's really quick. He's almost automatic going to be on second. Um, yeah, those are the breaks, you know, for a South team that has been struggling here. It seems yeah. like when you're struggling, you never can get a get a call like that. And it just seems like it keeps kind of piling up on you. And, you know, those are the breaks you need sometimes to try to get out of a little funk. But Harry did capitalize, came through with yep. a nice swing there, drove that ball through the hole. Almost a great play by Ben Soik, but uh, again, nice swing there going the other way. Uh, do you think Coach Loomis is saying stuff about the umpire here? <laughs> that might be one of those meetings yep. where uh, you're talking to the umpire and trying not to. Yeah, we got, we got 
rolled on this play so we can <laughs> see what we can do. And you just talk loud enough so he can hear him. <laughs> Trying not to show him up, right? No. But uh, you're, you're making sure he can hear you. And uh, I don't know what Soik is thinking here, but uh, yeah, that's not what this, I, they, they are not going to be bunting Brent Witter. And they got him picked off. He's gonna be saved. Oh, good throw. Great throw by Ben Soik. And you knew he was gonna go. Well, there you can see, here's a replay. And I think you're right there, but he was going to be called out no matter what on that one. <laughs> that's a tough play. You know, that's a real tough play. Those are plays that you work on in early spring. Um, but for Ben Soik, you know, he made, yeah. a good, made a real good throw. I didn't, I didn't think there would be a chance for them to get him. Wet where right. When he caught it, he was already three-quarters of the way there. And if you're the shortstop there, you got to be calling inside or outside based on where the runner is. And you got to, you know, step in and throw away. Yeah, you're right. Something we work on in the gym a lot. But once you get outside, which, well, of course, you can't practice much outside because it's cold and rainy all the time. But you sometimes don't use that, that play. And that was a nice play by Soik. And there's Witter with a grounder. And this time, he's going to hang on. But Nor strikes with a base hit by Feinberg and a base hit by Lounsack. They get a, get a run. It's now north three, and south still yet to score. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought, and unconventional methods come. I'm a teacher. I make more. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I groomed the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Back at Wildwood Park, Chris right along with uh, Ryan Schmidt. On a chilly day, glad the cameramen are outside and we're not. Scott Milos got the heat on in the truck. So who is your biggest rival at Beloit, or is every game just a, it's got to be a warrior in that, a war in that Big 8 conference, or yeah, did you eight, have some of that Big 8 conference, obviously every game was going to be a challenge. There was no, uh, no freebies, uh, but no. Uh, the big, uh, yeah, the big rivals were probably uh, the Janesville schools, uh, both Janesville Parker and Janesville Craig. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, so both of them would probably be, be the big rivals down there, but uh, it's not like a rivalry like this, you know, north-south. I don't think there's anything that you can compare the north-south rivalry to down there. Uh, again, this is always something that I think the the players love. Obviously, you're all kind of friends. You all play together throughout yep. the growing up. You play in the Legion. Uh, but you definitely want to have the bragging rights throughout the summer. I would think over there, Middleton and Sun Prairie had to be uh, pretty good clashes when Schmidt was there, and that had to be some some battles. Yeah, throughout the Big Eight, the, that would probably be the biggest biggest battle. They, they actually always did a nice thing. Uh, they had to have a strikeout for Cancer Day when they played against each other. They did a great fundraising job. Uh, another big rivalry was actually Madison West and Madison Memorial um, because they actually played at the same field. Uh, which is kind of odd, but in Madison they shared a lot of fields. They don't yep, have, just uh, like kind here. of like here. Yeah, yep. Sheboygan North, Sheboygan South uh, share the same fields. Not sure what the discussion is going on here with uh, Coach and the umpires. I have no idea. Coach Moyer is talking to the umpires.
guess they must have thought the game was going too fast, Coach. Uh, you know, it's, it's time limit or something. I have no down. idea what they're talking about. Unless they have a question on the pitch count. Because mm. Tim Moyer does the numbers, goes to south, and vice versa. How do, you, how do you guys do the pitch count here in this conference, Coach? Does, uh, does the home team have the tiebreaker? Yes. I think it's in general. Yeah, that's the WIA And rule, uh, so we think, actually, uh, you know, kind of ironic is we always had somebody do it for us. That way we don't have it. And then after every inning, we walk back and forth. But I'm not sure how, why they would be getting the umpires, because technically the umpires have nothing to do with the pitch Correct. count. So I'm not sure why they're involving the umpires if it does have something to do with the pitch count. I don't know if it was talking about some kind of lineup change, but I don't see any lineup change out there either. All right. Might have to try out those lights if we keep having a conversation like this. Well, I have no idea. I, uh, according to my numbers, he's not over the limit and uh, I don't know Jacob Gus goes over to Peyton and goes just throw the ball over the plate let's go <laughs> and uh, Elliot Pethon going to lead off the uh, inning for South South golden opportunity in the last inning Bases loaded, one out. Could not push a run across. Down three now with two innings to play. I think you have to find a way to chip away here. Got to try to find a way to score a run or two this inning so you have a chance here in the last. Now 3-0, uh, I believe it is, not 2-0. And that one's right down the middle. I think it's three and one. Yeah, it's three and one. If you're Peyton here, you just got to be attacking, try to let him beat yep. you with, with the bat. And there's another strike. Back to full. South trying to get that leadoff runner on. They've yet to take advantage of that chance to save but there they got one again this is the uh, second time not since the first that that has taken place and now Soik up that was a big run that North scored in the fifth Ryan yes it was and again uh, with the with the call kind of being overturned or you know a lot of things could have changed around there but uh, they they took advantage of it and got that run that's a big insurance run and Soik got all of that one, but it went foul. And again, you know, if you're south, trailing by three, limits your aggressiveness on the bait pass as well. Can't give away outs. Uh, that's why that was such a big run there by North. And he got hit that time. Well, two guys on, nobody out. Four hitter up. South is in business here to try to chip away. And I think Ben Vorpal time. Here he He's, comes. Yep. Nice job by Peyton today. Gonna finish with just a two hitter. He's responsible for both of the runners on base. Ben Vorpal, uh, Future big star for North. Pitches basically only for the uh, varsity and plays uh, regularly for the JVs. And uh, after using uh, Sherg and Hendricks yesterday, this is what you uh, have here. Nathan Hendricksy, 
throwing uh, the start of the game last night. Nathan uh, twice played Preble and really shut them down. Yeah, North played Preble really tough both uh, both yeah. times, which again, it's got to give them some confidence to be able to play with some of those uh, those top teams. And again, they've lost a lot of one run games throughout the year and another close game here. So they're used to these close games. Uh, North played all, all throughout the season. And another three sport athlete kid, big kid. I was looking forward to having him part of the program when I was there. Remember when he shined around as a middle schooler a little bit with his dad who's the tennis coach. It's kind of ironic because Brent Witter's dad is a tennis coach too, <laughs> playing baseball and here uh, been a baseball player as well. Well, Ben comes in a tough spot here, guys, on first and second. Now, some people might say to you, Bunt, well, you're, you're still down too, too many runs right now, and you have, you're have you supposed to have your four hitters supposed to be able to do something for you. Yeah, I think it all depends on the hitter. If you have a real good bunter and, uh, and a guy that can maybe even beat one out, it can be a win-win. Yep. Um, but uh, I think they're probably going to hit away here and try to try to hit something in the gap. I agree with you. And now, whoops, oh. now Hunter threw on him. Oh, he did square around like he was going to bunt. And now we're going to get a situation where we have. A lot of action on that play, Coach. Had a square around bunt like he was going to bunt. And then he took off the third and threw it in the left field. Oh, no. They are, are they going to call interference? They're going to call interference. You've got to be kidding me. Can we have a replay of that, Scott, if you have it? That is unbelievable. And goes and fouls out with Lumens. So they're calling interference on the batter, right? No, they're calling they interference calling? on the runner when he dove into the plate. He, he's tried to avoid, he just slid, but they're saying he interfered with the catcher. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Do we have a replay, Scott, of that at all? It's, I don't know. That's a tough break. It's going to take the run off the board. That's just, uh, here's the play at the plate. And, oh, he didn't slide. And the catcher tried to catch it over here. And that's where he hit him. Bang, bang, play. Tough call. He didn't slide. But he did not slide. Mm. And a simple situation again. You know, that's why you have a guy sitting at home going down, down, down. And uh, here's the replay. Here you're going to see the throw over his head. Then a late. He's standing on the base. Why are you standing on the base, for one thing? You should be off the base watching the situation because you can come back. And then when he came in, he did not slide. And therefore, they called him out. So it's, here's the play one more time. Well, we saw it all. We have a stolen base, no air now. No air now. Except you could call an air on the, the Actually, runner did advance. probably advances a second on the air because he wasn't stealing the base. And again, this is, they're still arguing over where the runner should be. Coach Goes is now out here arguing for some reason. 
He wants to run her back at first base, but he was already at second. Yeah, so he should stay on second base. If they're calling the interference on the, on on the, the play. catcher there, or on the, on the guy diving into the home plate, the guy's going to stay at second. He advances second still on the stolen base. And once again, we'll, you know, because he did advance on the throw right here. You can see now the guy is running the second base. He's going to second now. He's on second. Now he takes off. See, he's well past second base there. And here's a pitch. And Hunter tries to get it, but he can't. That's a big turn of events there on a one play. You know, we go from first and second, nobody out. Uh, obviously stealing, but either way, now you got one out, a guy on second. Big turn of events. At that point, when he did steal the base, I think when he hesitated, you almost have to stay at third yep. base there. Uh, when you hesitate, yep. you know, you're especially you're down three. You know, we're yep. down three runs in the sixth inning. Don't get I, was, I thought he was going to be thrown out the plate. I really did. I, I didn't think it was the right play. Here's a fly ball by Krugel. And uh, now we're going to get a guy thrown out at third when you're down by three. And uh, it just, uh, just gets worse. It's just for South. But after end of five and a half, it's now... Still three to nothing. <laughs>
very impressed with his swing. He's nice short to the ball. Now he's drove a ball up the middle, drove one down the down yep. left field line. I'm very, very impressed. Fifth hit. Fifth hit for North. Which will uh, get us to, uh, I believe, this is Bennett Becker batting here. Bennett, one out of two. He had a single up the middle in the first Bennett. inning. Becker. Trey Kleslick has really been throwing a good game, though, here, too. I mean, uh, you know, both Peyton Boyd and now Trey Kleslick. I've been impressed with both the starting pitchers today. You know, Trey Kleslick's thrown a lot of strikes and, and has gotten out of some jams. On deck is Owen Dominguez. He's one of those seniors that we were uh, talking about trying to get him in. Owen did a little pretty well at uh, scholarship night last week, <laughs> to say the very least. Oh, Owen's a great kid. I He's a great kid. Had him in class and uh, very, very nice and polite and very, very hard worker. He deserves everything that yep. he got. He's a 5-0 student, ran cross country in the fall. There's a ground ball by Becker. Is Owen going to get a chance to hit? Yes, he is, as Becker beats it down the line. Pretty good turn there by the second baseman, Cameron Meyer. Didn't think they'd even have a chance there to turn that double play, but uh, he made it pretty close. And here's Owen Dominguez coming up to uh, bat. Coach has kind of been the kind of game that we yep. kind of predicted to be. A low scoring, yep. not very many hits. Yep. And again, South could have limited the damage twice. They should have only allowed one run in that first inning, but chose to go home. And Owen's going to ground out to the pitcher. And that'll bring up the top of the seventh. We'll keep it here for this last inning here. Uh, technically, it could be a very simple one to nothing ball game. Uh, and South had chances to score too. They had the bases loaded. They had opportunities there, first and second, with nobody out in the sixth. Ended up with nothing. Not even a runner left on base. So yeah, a lot, the last two innings, South has had a lot of action on the bases, and you know that could have gone the other way, where you know, they yep. could have probably taken the lead, but now they got a three-run deficit, which is always tough to. Tough to come back from. Key is here trying to get that first leadoff guy on. And then if you're, you know, on north, you want a first out is the key one. Well, mm -hmm. it's glad you could join us here. I don't know what's going to happen here with this, but thanks for filling in for Marty. I know I called you late. The reason I called him late was I'm on jury duty as of this week. And I was supposed to have a trial today, and so mm -hmm. I didn't want to make plans. I was, if I had to be on jury, I was assuming or hoping it would be canceled or second I wouldn't be picked but uh, I just wanted to wait till last night to make absolutely sure oh, but thanks, thanks for, for filling in thanks for calling me I was planning on coming to the game anyways but it's warmer up here it is a little warmer up here a little more conversation up here and uh, it's been a pretty good ball game so far And for some of these seniors, this could be their last high school experience here at Wildwood. I'm sure many of these kids will be playing in the summer. Let's start with the pitcher, Trey Klessing, who's pitched a very nice ball game today. He's only allowed five hits. He's got to get on base somehow. Some way, somehow, he's got to scrap himself on base. And Warple does the right thing and gets ahead. I was always nervous until I got that first out, Mar uh, Ryan. Yeah, when you have a lead like yep. this, the first out's really the big one, um, right? I mean, and if you're trying to come back from uh, a deficit, that leadoff guy is really the big one. Yep. You need to try to find a way that gives you life, gives your bench some life to, that you think you can do this. 
And there's a shot out to right, but that's going to be playable for sure because he sees it in. That's a big out for North. Getting yep. that first one. Can breathe a little bit easier. Uh, again, trying to just be simple, right? Trying to make the simple play here. Mason broke up the no-hitter in the fifth inning with a single. One out of two. But that was against Peyton Voigt, who's up for the, the win. Corporal trying to pick up a save. Corporal's done a nice job coming in here throwing strikes. You know, when you come in relief, sometimes you never know how it's going to go. But coming in and attacking the zone, throwing a nice little hook there too, get ahead of the head of its 0-2. Oh, that one off. I want to thank Scott for uh, helping us out to do some baseball. And we love doing high school sports. We hope we'll be doing more in the fall. Marty's already put together a football schedule. But uh, we're going to maybe need some sponsors or something for that magic to happen at the consistency that we do. Now there's a play to Witter and automatic for him. Six to three. And uh, South down to their last out. This be Colin Brennan. Colin drew a walk back in the fifth, struck out in the second. just a tad high. Both these teams will start regional play next week, Tuesday. Yep, brand new sectional with all the summer teams in, all the West Bends, the Slingers. Uh, both North and South hoping to get a little luck. Have to win two games to get to sectional. Both trying to Catch a little lightning in a bottle for both squads. Be interesting to see I was who the pitchers will be. Klessing pitched good here, so I'd assume he's gonna be I would be interesting if I would think North is gonna go with Sherg. But Nathan Hendricks see has been pitching well. Forpel's okay. I would think South would go with Klessig. He's looked really, really well. I've been very impressed throwing that fastball and curveball. And I think uh, I think North will go with Sherg. Nathan Hendricks, not the best of starts this year, but uh, he's been pitching very well for North as of late. Pitching actually hasn't been a problem for North. It's been the uh, it's been the uh, offense struggles and woes. Once again, the top of the order for North today with uh, no hits, and that you just they got to get. That's not true. Feinberg got that base hit on the liner there. They got it. Those guys got to go. They got to get four, four or five hits a game if they're going to go in the tournament. That's for sure. I see Terry Berkovitz is here. He done a lot of work in this field. A lot of work in this field. 2-0 for Ben Vorpal here. North needing one out to sweep south. There's a shot. This is going to get over his head. Sherd playing up. And I told you Kevin Myers, okay, we're going to settle right there. And right now, south not done. They're going to have their re-entered player, Colin Mangan, going to bat. And if he can get on, we have the top of the order for South. Cameron Meyer really, really drove that ball well. Really just kind of dropped the head of the bat on it, down and in. Those lefties love that down and in pitch and really drove that over the right fielder's head. And obviously this is pretty simple to say, but obviously the batter that North wants to get.
good pitch to get ahead there after, after giving up the double. Three hits now for South. That one's slapped foul in an 0-2 situation here. Magnin's gotta find some magic, find some grass in between some hitters. I can see the Caduceus are right here in the dirt. There it is, and it was not in the dirt, it was up. I don't know what that was. It's curveball that got away, I think. Yep. That's well struck. That's your Megan, you just got to do whatever you can here. Just kind of keep battling. Yeah. Hope, uh, you know, maybe you can keep battling, see a few more pitches, put something in play. You got to put some kind of pressure on the defense. Yeah. Takes that approach again. He can knock it over to uh, right. And here's the pitch. And I guess the ball. We're gonna see another. Good curveball there for Old Meg and, and the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> two two, two outs, two on. There's what I said. If he slaps it into fire territory, but that one goes foul. That's just what I thought he could maybe possibly do, but he's gotta get it down to sheer a little bit. I think he comes back here with a 2-2 curveball. It's been kind of uh -huh. going every other. Uh-huh. Ben's a big kid. Big, strong kid. Good one to take. Fought, fought it to pull. Yep. Did what he's supposed to do, but yeah, tough one to take. And there's a little slapper. Forple picks it up barehanded, throws it away, and now South is going to have the tying run at second and third. I don't understand why Meyer is just rolling into uh, third base there with two outs, but... Uh, yeah, with two outs, you would think he'd probably be running hard. He should have easily scored, but either way, again, the tying run now is at second base for the top of the order coming up. And I'll tell you, that was a great at bat by Magnin. I know I wanted to mention this a couple times. You know, just getting a piece of the, of the I mean, you are a master. Uh, for most people don't know, Ryan was one of the top D3 uh, batters of not striking out. You, you never, I mean, rarely struck out in your college career. We're right up there in the rankings. What was the, the work for that or? Well, huh? good thing I'm not playing now because that's too old school, I think, <laughs> right? I mean, now the game is strikeouts and hitting for power, but you know, I guess growing up, you always just wanted to put some pressure on the defense and do whatever you can. I, I hated striking out, and I didn't want to definitely strike out looking. I, you, know, you just shorten up, you get on top of that plate, and you just start fighting off pitches until you get yours. And sometimes I think uh, even hitting two strikes, the pitcher makes more mistakes. So you can, uh, you know, you hit their mistake. But uh, again, it's always tough. You just got to battle. It's a mindset. And uh, same thing here now. Mindset for South. They got a chance. You know, one little bloop, one little air again, and we, we got a tied ball game. Yep. And Ben did the right thing there. He barehanded it. He, if he just stepped in through, but again, it's 40 some degrees outside. You know, if that if it was 75 degrees, I'm sure that would have been an easy play. But it's a lot tougher here. And yeah, he just rushed it a little. Did a good job. Just didn't really step and throw. Kind of stood up again. Kind of like we were mentioning earlier in the game. But this time of game, that last out, it's always a tough one to get. Yeah. Tim is 0 for 1. Walked twice, and here's another chance. This one's off the end of the bat, and this one will end the game, though. Well, that's going to be it for uh, the ball game. North's going to come away with 3-1. Uh, to one. I was going to say senior day, but it's senior day for both clubs, and both teams battled hard and could have gone either way. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having us, and good luck to both North and South here in the tournament as it gets started next week. Absolutely. 
Well, we're going to close off our season right now. And again, we want to thank our crew for their sitting out in the cold. And thanks for all our sports this year. Uh, as Marty always closes out the, the year, he says, we'll see you down the road. And Marty's not here, but folks, we hopefully will see you down the road next fall.